the one horse I'm most looking forward to this season. Is he the captain? He possibly is the captain of the team. Okay. He's a bumper winner. He's trained by Willie Mullins. Hello and welcome along to the Let's Talk Racing YouTube channel for our third video of the new 2024 to 2025 jump season. You are watching episode one of our horses to follow. We know that you enjoy this every single year and on this episode we'll both be putting up five horses to follow each that we all need to be following ahead of next season. Thank you so much for all of the love on the first two videos. Went down very well. Went down superbly, yeah, and your video with Adam was absolutely brilliant, I thought. You know, obviously I'm going to be very biased in this <laughs> situation, but I thought he, he was a fantastic listen. He was very concise. He had an ability to give a cross an opinion that was like both complex but also easy to understand, which I think is a very hard feat. Absolutely, I absolutely loved making it, and I thought it was a brilliant guess. A huge thank you I, to. I to could Adam tell you on. were just absolutely in your element. You were just naming these horses off and just going, "Whoa, fire away, <laughs> fire away, Adam! Tell me all the nice things. Try the hurdles. Oh, go on." Um, yeah, it was lots of fun, and if you haven't watched that already, do please uh, go back and watch that video. It was so much fun to make, and I do think that it's a, a real um, a head start against the rest of the national hunt world going into next season, especially with the juveniles, which you don't really get to to have earlier on in the season. So, uh, if you did enjoy that video, then please do let us know down in the comments, and we are going to be making a couple of videos with some more special guests, possibly next next week as well. But if you do enjoy this first video, then do hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If we can hit 500 likes on this video, that would be absolutely amazing, and what a way that would be to kickstart the new season. Right, Andrew, take it away, your first horse to follow, and the first horse to follow on the channel. Look, we've been through this all before, and what people are gonna expect from me is Paul Nolan. They're going to expect John McConnell. They're going to expect Oliver McKeon. Right. They're going to expect Barry Connell. So, so which Paul Nolan horse are you putting up? I, I'm this year. We've got to expect the unexpected. None of them on the list. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm as surprised as anybody. I'm, I'm taking a little bit of a new tact. I'm obviously the good horses of each of those yards. I'm still going to be the best. You know supporter of and I hope that they all have very good seasons I think in all those yards there are a couple of horses to look at but I've looked further afield is there a reason why I think I'd just uh, I think last year if we we're calling a spade a spade I was um clouding my judgment okay. I suspect was how I was looking at it I was I was potentially putting up horses that I'd want to do well and I still want them to do well but we've got to be a little bit more objective mm -hmm. at times yeah so the first one I'm going to put up is a stable switch, which some people will know if they're very much glued to the sails, but a horse called Sporting Glory, who was in the Clipper Logistic Colours last year for Pat Fahey, he ended up coming onto the scene. He was second in a bumper at Down Royal. He was then second in a bumper behind Romeo Coolio. Okay. And he gave Romeo Coolio a bit of a fright that day as well, which was awfully nice to see. And then we went on, he won his bumper, and he was then chucked into a grade two novice hurdle at Fairy House. He's an eight year old, and I think they were probably just thinking, let's get this Joe on the road. He's obviously been hard to keep sound in his earlier part of his career, and therefore he's, he's sound now, let's run him. And he was a very eye-catching fourth behind Mirazur West, when he was staying on very well to the line, having jumped well, given a probably a relatively tender ride, an educational ride by Michael O'Sullivan on the day. He was part then of the Clipper dispersal sale, and he's been picked up by Gordon Elliott for 120 grand, which seems a fair amount of money for horses going eight, nine. I reckon he's an absolute shoe in to win a maiden hurdle first time out, if I'm being brutally honest. And I'd be very, very disappointed if this isn't a graded novice hurdler. Exciting. I love graded novice hurdlers. I'm going to hopefully put one up as my first horse to follow. This time trained by Nicky Henderson and owned by J.P. Manis. And it's a horse who won a bumper last year at Wincanton called Centre of Attention. Now, I really, really think that he could be one of Nicky's. So we're looking at John Bond, we're looking at Constitution Hill, and we're not really seeing that next novice come through. Oh. I think Centre of Attention could possibly be that one. He ran in a sixth runner bumper at Wincanton and they went quite a crawl, they sprinted clear, he had enough pace, enough tactical pace to hit the front and then stay there. I thought it was a very, very solid performance and the form is decent as well. 
The second is rated 121, has won twice since in decent company. The fourth went and finished second to Gotta Dream and Nicky Martins. I think that he's a decent horse. And the fifth probably didn't run his race, but had finished fourth in a listed bumper at Cheltenham on his previous start and won a maiden hurdle on his next start. So the form is rock solid. He did it really, really well. He was quite green, but he hit the line hard. And I do think that he's probably going to be one of those that turns up to a Newbury in one of those maiden hurdles or novice hurdles and then goes and gets the national racing enthusiasts quite excited about what could become the spring festivals. So it gets you excited as well. Basically, yeah, I, I probably will have uh, quite a, an interesting time that evening watching him in the novice hurdle. Um, form is really solid. I think he could be top class. So center of attention is my first horse to follow. I should learn year on year. We have this epiphany every time with Ollie Murphy bumper horses <laughs> going novice hurdling. We're still looking for that horse to burst onto the scene and be a grade one novice hurdler. I'm still hoping this year's the year though and I've plumped for Woodland Park who possibly isn't maybe the flashiest one of the lot of bumper horses he had from last year. I was just really taken with how he won at market race and he was third on debut at Kempton Park when looking quite green. He was well backed that day so they clearly think a little bit of him and the way he just did it at market raise and was in the matter of a horse that I think should be going up in trip. I'm not sure whether he has an explosive turn of pace, but I really like the way he just grounded out. He was it was on soft ground, he's a big stocky horse. I just thought he was the type of horse that if I see over two and a half miles, over three miles this year, I'll be really excited to see what he can do. Obviously, you know, it's very hard to equate some of this form. The form hasn't really been tested too much because it was a late March bumper. So therefore, it, it's hard to know. He could have been beating trees for all we know, but he beat them very impressively. He, he can only beat what's there. And again, if he's going up in trip, two and a half miles to start off with, I'd be disappointed if this horse couldn't take a relatively fair rank over an office hurdle this year. I think he's quite smart as well. And I think that a couple of years ago, he had two novices in, in Strong Leader and Chasing Fire, who he was both very keen on at the start of the season. I think that he might have a similar situation this year he's got mm. two quite smart novice hurdlers and I think the other one could be weighed out who I'm actually going to put up as my second horse to follow he's in the the colors of Sir Alex Ferguson and uh, Mason and 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 Alex uh, sorry John Hales yeah. um so attention's sp sp sprung to mind straight away he went to market raisin on debut and he won a bumper in impressive fashion he hit the line really really hard but what I really liked about it is he flew through the line in proper winter ground conditions. The second ace of spades and the third jubilant both won easily on their next start. So the form is decent. Ace of spades actually went and beat another one of Ollie's in a Warwick bumper, um, who Ollie gave £100,000 for. I'm sure that was a bittersweet um, yeah. form boost for Wade <laughs> Out. Uh, but he did it on debut. He was very, very, very good. Now, look, I, I'm sure Ollie Murphy probably had him... Um, spot on he'd have known his job that day especially with those own owners in the yard he'll want them to be impressed definitely uh, but weighed out to yeah probably. absolutely <laughs> but he's a novice hurdle that i really really like this season and ollie's also got the half brother uh, to john bon as well in there so looking forward to, to going and catching up with ollie in fact the little um secret disclaimer whatever you might call it we are going to see ollie murphy for a vlog we're going up to his yard one morning so if you've got any questions for him for that video do get them down in the description and we will answer them make sure they're answered by ollie but way down woodland park both ollie Mur murphy novice hurdles to follow yeah, we hope so. Anyway, we've gone for a fair few novice hurdlers. I've got a few more novice hurdlers to go, but I'm going to go this time round for a horse that was a novice hurdler last year, trained by Jonathan Sweeney. Uh, obviously only has a small but select bunch of horses over in Ireland, but he had a nice horse in the case of Rushmount, who had finished twice second in point to points and then kind of sprang onto the scene pushing Lecky Watson within a neck on his mm -hmm. first rules start at Thurlis over two mile seven furlong. I was very impressed that day. Obviously he was a, a green horse. He'd just come from point to points. Lecky Watson had some good bumper form. Mm -hmm. He obviously went on to contest some of those graded novice hurdlers come the end of the season. He then went back to Thurlis. He won his maiden hurdle beating Find a Fortune. He's a fair horse by 10 lengths, but did it really impressively. Picked up very nicely at the back of two out and put the race to bed in impressive style. He then was tried in grade two company over two mile four at Perry House. It was deep ground. Apparently he was scoped after the race. He was all wrong. It was, was very sick. So I prepared to just put a line through that. He was pulled up. You might put a see a P on the form lines and you go, oh yeah, what about this horse? He's apparently back in work, doing very nicely. 
They're yet to decide whether he's going to stay hurdling or go novice chasing. By the size of him, I'd have thought novice chasing was possibly uh, the right way forward. But obviously, maybe because he's only ran three times over hurdles, they want a little bit more experience. But Rushmount is definitely the type of horse to keep on side because... With that type of connections in Ireland, I always feel you get that slightly better type of price because mm. he might be running against an Elliot horse, a Mullins horse, and he might be just as good as them. I always got that feeling with Dermot McLaughlin as well mm. that you got yeah. a better price for, for what horse you were backing. Definitely, yeah. There's just a few of these trainers are very good when they get given the ammunition. It's hard to find that ammunition, mm. obviously, but when they do have it, I'd be latching onto it. No, I, I like him a lot. I'm actually going to follow a very similar theme. And this time for a horse who is not a stranger to the Let's Talk Racing channel. And that's because I put him up last year. I think I probably put him up a year too soon. And I'm going to stick with him because I, I really, really feel there's a top class horse in there. He hasn't quite shown it yet, but that's in the water side for Paul Nichols. He's going chasing this year. And I think that could be the making of him. Last year, he won on debut kind of really clamoured home uh, against Jaguar of, of Gueros uh, and Greenhalls at Aintree. That was over two and a half miles. I, I, I still wasn't really sure if that was the best in the waterside that we've seen, but he really doesn't like the arch. I was speaking to Harry Cobden. He doesn't like the arch at Aintree underneath. He really spooks. Um, okay. So I think he got quite worked up before that day. But I do think that fences, he's enormous, and that could be a negative as well. But I can only see improvement from it. Three winners have come from his Lingfield win, which has worked out pretty well. He then went to Aintree at the back end of last year and bumped into two horses who are far quicker than him in Katira and Django Bai. Like Django Bai is a great one winner over two miles. Katira was extremely well handicapped that day. He finished third a long way clear from the rest of the field, having done the donkey work. I thought that was a really good run. I think he could be and there might be flashier types in Captain Teague, but I think he will be Paul Nichols' Corto star horse. Even though that he's a massive horse, I think that probably misprofiles him slightly. I actually think he's a bit speedier and you could probably make use of him. Um, and up to three in a race like the Corto star, I think he'd quite suit Campton. So I think that he could be one on that sort of race radar. I think he could be effectively a much better novice chaser than he is a, a hurdler. He's rated 132 over hurdles. I think he could be a 145 plus horse over fences. So I'm hoping there's improvement to come. Um, and to me, the likes of a top of the game, for instance, was a handicap hurdler. He went chasing. He then turned into a, a grade one horse. I'm not sure in the waterside could be an absolute grade one horse. I'm not sure he's going to win the Corto star, but I do think he's going to develop into one of Paul Nichols' leading three mile novice chases this season. Do you think he's the type of horse, you know, there's that, I think it's a grade two or grade three novice chase over two and a half on Badger Beers. Yeah, day. the Rising Stars. Is yeah. That, that type of race potentially he, as, a, as a stepping stone? Yeah, he could be. I think Paul has. Uh, shortlisted a couple um, for that race as well so I'm not 100% sure it'll be in the water side um, he does have plenty for but uh, yeah he's been doing his planning I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll mention it in the next video um, but uh, he's definitely penciled in a few for that race so, so maybe not that but I do think that he's going to be a serious serious chaser um, and one I'm excited about and I'm sticking with um, I know that people will be watching this video going are you just in love with this horse well you are I, I am but <laughs> I, I, I'm going to stick with him. I think that he's going to be top class one day and hopefully that's this season. Well, I, if, it, if it's not this season, I, I'd wonder when it is mm. going to happen. Oh, exactly, yeah. Uh, yeah. If you'd like to hope he'll make the giant strides over fences. I'm going to give a little bit of love to the north now right. uh, with a Nicky Richards horse mm -hmm. of all uh, who actually won a bumper at Weatherby. Again, I'm... Uh, Quite a lot of the ones I'm putting up have, have won maybe late season bumpers, which might be, I suppose, a little bit of a risk in itself because some of that form isn't particularly tested. But I was really impressed with Jupiter Day Marsh, uh, who's the horse I'm putting up. The way he did it at Weatherby, it was his first start, no point-to-point -point experience, no previous bumper experience. There was a bit of money for him around on the day, which I always like to see with Nicky Richards horses because they usually have a fair idea when they've got a nice enough one. And if you stop the race two furlongs down, you'd think this horse is going to come seventh or eighth. Right, like okay. He's kind of not really going anywhere. And he ends up getting brought to the outside by Danny McMenamin. And it's just suddenly whoosh. Like on his way he goes. He, he starts passing a couple of horses. And then he gets in a protracted battle with the other horse on the inside. Goes by him very nicely. Again, form very much untested. Plenty of them in behind haven't run since, but I think it was a night. There was a few horses that certainly came into the race with big reputations. A horse that I'd keep on side is Malfoy Manor, who ended up kind of blowing out. No, Josh Guerrero still thinks he's a pretty nice horse. So 
it's that type of race that could actually be really nice in in mm. theory in time and we might just have to wait for it to materialize i think given connections it'll probably be given a slightly easy time of things this side of christmas you know try to find a, an officer or somewhere get a win on the board but Nicky Richards isn't against, you know, running horses at Aintree come the back end of the seeds and running in at air maybe in, in some of those bigger novice hurdles. So I'd like to hope that Jupiter Mott, if he can go on from what was visually an incredibly impressive day, but it could be a nice horse. I like that a lot. I want for the North as well uh, to get excited about. The next horse is going to be, I think, the one horse I'm most looking forward to this season. Is he the captain? He possibly is the captain of the team. Okay. He's a bumper winner. He's trained by Willie Mullins, but he didn't win the champion bumper. He didn't win at Punchestown. He's ran once, and that was at Fairy House Easter Festival, and it's a horse called Copec de Board. Four-year-old, which is interesting and important to know. He's only four. Apparently, when he went and won at Fairy House, which he did in fine style, Patrick held him up. He went off favourite. A clap of thunder really, really stretched the field, and he just took off, and apparently took a long, long time to pull up. Um, they were arming and ahhing with the Punchestown champion bumper, the grade one, didn't run because he was four. So I'm glad that they're giving him a bit of time. I know that Nigel thought a lot of Clap of Thunder. The pace was really strong. He settled. He went through the race really well. Patrick had all the confidence in the world, so they clearly thought an awful lot of him. And what's interesting is Willie Mullins has been investing in that bloodline. So he picked up the Half Brother store for 210,000 euros as well, straight after, which is very interesting. Um, and the race was won by Brighter Days Ahead last year. The race has been won by top class horses throughout its existence, if you look through the Roll of Honour. Um, that's no surprise that a good horse has won the race because it's a, a very, very lucrative race if you do win it. But the season before, Ballyburn did win at Punchestown, but he didn't run in the Cheltenham bumper. And I still had the feeling that he was the best bumper horse yeah. going into last year. I said that very early doors. I thought he was top, top class. I get the same feeling from this guy. I think he is possibly going to be best up in trip as well. I think he's probably a two and a half miler. But what I quite like is he's four, hopefully plenty of improvement to come. I don't think he'd been given the absolute works before that race course debut. So I think there could be lots of improvement. And if there is, he's a frightening prospect because he was so good on debut. He was, he was absolutely superb. Um, just even visually, the, the way he picked up, there's a lot of horses that would have had slightly you know that would have had big profiles big reputations going into that race and he was having none of it do you think in 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 hindsight that him not potentially running in a champion bumper like i looked at last year's champion bumper we mm. may as well address it as we're discussing an awful lot of bumper horses was it a bit muddy like uh, i'm not sure what to make it like you've got the first and the second in jasmine devoe and romeo coolio both went to punch us down and blew out I wouldn't obviously, you know, hold that against them because the next horse I'm going to put up blew out of Punchestown as well. But it just does make it feel like what is the form? I I would agree to some extent. What what was slightly concerning for me is I all I thought a lot of Romeo Cooler going into that race a had all season. The vibes were that it was very good. I still found it slightly discouraging on the form that a horse who wasn't that impressive on debut went to a champion bumper, traveled like a dream down the hill and finished second. Yeah. And the winner, I think it only ran once before yeah, yeah, as well. I don't know what that form is worth. No. Um, Jalon Duderi ran a very solid race and I'd use him as the marker. So it, it's interesting. I'm not in love with, with Jasmine Devoir or Vo or yeah. however you say it. Um, I prefer the slag cup at the board. Yep, I can see that. I, I can see going away from the champion bumper form maybe being the angle into some of the novice hurdles this year, if I'm being brutally honest. A horse I'm going to put up as my last one on this episode, uh, trained by Tom Cooper, actually, who ran in the exact same race as Jasmine DeVoe and Romeo Coolio, and equally disappointed at the Punchestown Festival and its shuttle diplomacy. Prior to that, he had been two from two, and like your horse, Copac de Board, is also a four-year-old. So I think that also gives me a little bit more encouragement to just allow that be. He'd had his two runs. They were possibly rolling the dice at a grade one. He'd been so impressive the previous two times. I, I'd allow just that be to, you know, to manifest itself, and I think he'll be a better horse this year. He won the opening four-year-old bumper at Nace, uh, which is run on Lawler's a Nace day. I always feel with the Coopers, especially with the Moonies owning them, who have pumped a fair bit of money into that yard, a little bit like Ollie Murphy with Wade Out, I suspect the horse knew its job, but also did show greenness. 
but it was when he went to Limerick. He went to Limerick for that listed bumper that's been won by a few nice types in the past on heavy ground. Very hard to look visually impressive on heavy ground at Limerick. This horse scooted in. Like he won with Patrick Mullins pulling a cart. So that's probably the reason why they were like, well, we've got to run in a grade one now. Whether he's a grade one horse, I'm not so sure, but I'd be very disappointed if, if this horse couldn't land a maiden hurdle this side of Christmas in the right type of conditions. I think he's he, he's shown a, a versatility that, you know, he's won on heavy ground at Limerick, he's won on slightly nicer ground at Nace. I suspect he doesn't want necessarily any extremes. But again, just looking away from the Willie Mullins, looking away from the Henry de Bromeds, Gavin Cromwells, I think Tom Cooper's got a pretty good horse on his hands here in Shuttle Diplomacy. Exciting. Very exciting. I like all of your five, mate. Thanks. Are you happy with them? I'm I'm very happy with them. It's very different to the usual. Mm. It's very different not putting up a three-mile no. John McConnell novels hurdle. <laughs> I'm very much looking forward to seeing how they get on. My final horse to follow is a horse trained by Dan Skelton, and it is, again, the bumper winner going novice hurdling. It's a type of profile that I really like. This one's Country Mile, who I think could be one of Dan's better novices. He was in the hands of, of Francesca and Charlie Post. Uh, Charlie's a good friend of mine. I spoke to him about him, and he said that he couldn't believe he got him beat in a point to point they thought a lot of him at home uh, he went to a two and a half mile point to point got beat a couple of lengths went to dan's and absolutely hacked up in a huntington bumper traveled very very well he's a big horse he shouldn't really be winning bumpers but he did it very impressively and off the vibe from the yard he i know they had royal infantry i think finished seventh or eighth in the champion bumper yeah. and a few good bumper horse last year i think this guy could be even flashier i think okay. the rest of them knew their job and I think they're very excited about Country Mile. Um, the form is hard to weigh up, but there were two previous bumper winners in the field. I don't think many of them have ran afterwards. So the form isn't uh, really, really solid because we don't know how good it is. But those two bumper winners were beaten an awfully long way. And I think he might have a few things to learn upstairs. Still might be a bit immature, a bit babyish. But once he sorts that out, he's got lots under the bonnet. And I do think the Country Mile could be one of Dan's better novice hurdlers and a horse to get very excited about for years to come um, because I think he looks every inch of a chaser as well and that's a, a racing cliche but he, if you look at him in that bumper enormous he's fella a, he's a very player. very very smart indeed so Country Mile is my final and our final um, horse to follow for episode one we do hope you enjoyed please do let us know your horses to follow down in the comments. We are very keen to read them all. And uh, put it this way, if you put them down below, we'll semi-promise not to include them in next week's video as well, or in next in That's the next episode. Great. That's the next episode, unless you've got all of Andrew's and all of mine, then we're gonna have to do some of them. Um, but if you did enjoy this video, please hit that like button. 500 likes would be amazing. Thank you for all the support, and we do hope you enjoyed this first episode of the horses to follow for the 2024 and 2025 season.